Easter worship. We are so glad you are here tuning in with us today, worshiping wherever you are. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. It's a good day to be together. If you're our guest, we want to especially welcome you and welcome you uh, to this body of Christ, this body of believers. We are so glad you're here. At St. Paul's, we love God and all others unconditionally. We seek answers to our questions, and we serve God by serving others. We celebrate the worth, dignity, and gifts of every person as a child of God. We want to know that you're here. You can comment or like or uh, sign the attendance. You can also share your prayer requests. We want to be a part of your journey. You can get plugged in uh, deeper here at St. Paul's through that as well and ask any questions you need to. Uh, we want to connect with you. 
A couple of announcements. Uh, this afternoon, 12.30 to 1.30, we uh, have our first Sunday food drive. It happens every month, uh, and we bring food and uh, supplies for our neighbors, both here in Johnson County and in Wyandotte County. You can come and drive through. I hear there might be an appearance from the Easter Bunny, so <laughs> if you would like to come and, and, um, and serve, we, we'd love to see you and your smiling faces this resurrection. Resurrection Sunday. I also want to announce to you that in a couple weeks, in a few weeks, April 25th, we begin and resume in-person worship. We'll be outside in, in our lower lot, outside the, the wooden wing of our, um, of our building. We're thrilled. Uh, you can find out more about that. We'll have both contemporary and traditional outside. We'll also live stream our traditional service early in the morning at 8.15, and then um, we'll, we'll stream the recording from our 9, 9.30 worship, our contemporary service, at 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. So you'll have a chance to both be online if that's best for you or to, to be in person if that's best for you, whether it's contemporary or traditional. We're so excited, <laughs> and so we hope you are too. And as we lead up to that, we're having gatherings for um, for folks to be able to, to come back in this space and rededicate it for God. The The mission left the building in, in, a, in a beautiful and exciting way uh, uh, when we needed to most during this pandemic, and we want to also rededicate this space, this, this holy ground at St. Paul's, Back, um, back to God as well. And so you'll have a chance to meet with staff and, and walk the building and just be here and be with God. And so you can sign up for that. Um, it was in our newsletter this week, but, but for those gatherings as well. We're thrilled. We're excited. It's Resurrection Sunday after the Lentiest Lent of all Lents, <laughs> and we are excited to worship. So let us go to God in worship. my tomb till I met you
sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. Amen. Would you pray with me, everybody? God, thank you so much for coming back to save us. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you that the hardness that we go through now cannot compare to what is to come. God, as we learn about you and we celebrate uh, the amazing things that you have done in us and for us, um, would you come meet us here and, and teach our hearts through your Holy Spirit? Amen. 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 It is a glorious day. Our scripture today comes from the 24th chapter of Luke, and, and we find ourselves after the women have, have told the other disciples what they found was an empty tomb and that Jesus was alive. It's the walk to Emmaus. Hear these words. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, whose name was, was Cleopas, answered him, are, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, what things? And they replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it's almost every evening and, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and he blessed, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together, 
they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Will you pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For God, you are our rock, our strength, and today especially we remember you are our redeemer. Amen. So a year ago, we we joked, right? We joked that that we were when we were in lockdown mode that it was the lentiest Lent of all Lents, right? There there were jokes about I didn't quite expect to give up so much for Lent, and none of us imagined, you know, <laughs> that we'd just now be reemerging with our families and our church and, and restaurants. Even we never imagined that it would feel like the lentiest Lent of of all Lents for this long. But I have to tell you, as I watch the iris blades rising and the grass greening and the cherry tree across the street from my house having these huge flowers on it and the show off the, you know, red buds outside these windows at our church playground, you know, just in time to be bright and beautiful today, and we sit here with near perfect weather outside, We might still not be packed into this sanctuary like normal, but God has done just about all God can do with creation and the whole, you know, Jesus being raised from the dead part to help us experience the Easteriest Easter of all Easters, right? Seriously, we have have to be trying pretty hard to not see the new life springing forth all around us right now. And I need the Easteriest Easter of all Easters this year, right? If you're at home, I hope that you have the windows open at your house uh, so you can hear the birds outside. You know, we do here. Uh, or go sit on your deck. I fully give you permission to pick up your laptop and go outside for the rest of, of church. It is gorgeous. And the truth is, you know, It can be overcast and and locked at home like Easter was last year and still be a message we need to hear. We know that because the empty tomb on Easter morning after the pain of, of Jesus enduring accusations, a sham trial, and public execution is the liberation and hope against all odds that sets us free regardless of the weather and the season. But in the life of the church, we do recognize my Siri. Just talk to me. It's cool. Christ is risen indeed, says Siri. In the life of the church, we do recognize this day and and the season that got us here to be holy and set apart. Here at St. Paul's, we have set this time apart by focusing on the bread scriptures of Jesus in our series, Daily Bread. And there are a lot of stories about Jesus and food in the Bible. We found that, you know, most of them are because Jesus cared a whole, whole lot about making sure everybody had enough to eat. And a whole, whole lot about making sure everyone was welcome at the table. That alone makes having him as a savior pretty incredible. Feeding everyone, including everyone, and there is bread. Like, sign me up for that, right? And we've baked bread as a church, everything from from crackers to, you know, the loaf of bread I made with a cross cut into, into it, like communion fancy bread or something. And there's been something really steady, steady about that for us. Relatable, right? It's just one of those things that connects us all. Maybe not baking bread, but we all eat even if it's not bread, right? We all have shared a meal with people we love around a table. We all have felt, at least at some point in the pandemic, an absence of those tables. If not with our families, not being at restaurants, or not sharing the communion table in person with our church family. 
And my prayer is that in this season of Lent, that we learned that, that there will always be enough bread at God's table, and there will always be enough grace for whatever sin and brokenness we employ, and there will always be a spot at the table for each and every one of you. We've celebrated Holy Communion every week and focused on it even more this, this past week, Holy Week, to remember the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his friends and his betrayers and how beautiful a Savior we have that still fed failure as sure as he did those who would yet fail him. This is my body. This is my life. Remember me, he said. That, that is a message and a mercy that is already good enough and full enough and wide enough to open our hearts to say yes to a relationship with Jesus, to salvation found in forgiveness that doesn't make sense to us. It's how God's world works, and God calls it good. But the good news, it gets a whole lot better with Easter. And on the Easteriest Easter of all Easters, we make our way to this final bread story we share. And it comes at the end of Luke's gospel and is only found in Luke. It's not in the, the other three gospels. And it's this treasure of a story. Because after Jesus was murdered and after his body was laid in the tomb, after the brave women went to the tomb with oils to tend to his body, after they found that the stone was rolled away and the tomb empty, after they were afraid, and after the angels told them that Jesus was not there, after they ran back to tell the other disciples, after the resurrection, we get this story, the walk to Emmaus. It's later that day, on Easter, two of the disciples were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, about seven miles. They were talking about everything that had happened, the death of their Lord, what the women had told them that morning, all of it, when Jesus walked up to them. And we know, we know that it's Jesus, but they don't. They still think Jesus is dead. And, and even if the women were right, they weren't expecting him out on the country road, right? It says that their eyes were covered, and, and that might have been because God did that to them, made it so they could not see. Or it might have been also something like our present day saying of, you know, I couldn't believe my eyes, right? They just couldn't believe what they were seeing, if, even if they did see it. Either way, they don't know that it's him. They just assume it's a random guy on the road, maybe a pilgrim who had come to Jerusalem for Passover, so Jesus asked them what they're talking about, and their response is telling even before they use words to do so. Their response is quite telling. It's, the scripture says that they stood still, looking sad. And they go on to ask him if he's the only person that hasn't heard what's happened, the execution of Jesus. To them, the topic of conversation was everything. It was everything. It was their whole world. They are grieved, so before they tell him all of that, it makes sense that they are sad. But Amy Jo Levine, a, a Jewish New Testament theologian, said that the Greek word is actually both for sad and for angry. Sad and angry. So when Jesus' stranger asks them what they're talking about, they stop the conversation and look either sad or angry or probably both. It's a kind of overwhelming grief and anger that happens in the wake of a death that never had to, ha had to have happened. And maybe they are, are mad at the powers that be who could have such disregard for innocent life, who could have taken their, their, uh, their own lives as they knew them away from them. Maybe they are disappointed in themselves. Could they have done more to save Jesus? As this stage of the trauma of the pandemic um, it is, you know, I can't help but having some empathy amidst the exhaustion for these two sad, angry disciples getting asked the equivalent of maybe something like, 
how are you in, in today's uh, world in the midst of a pandemic, right? It's like, what do you mean, how am I, right? I am not well. I am not well. My world has been turned upside down. Today was the first time I gathered with my congregation in a year. Over 500,000 people have died in the United States alone from a pandemic, and I am sad. Thousands of people have died, and it did not have to be this way. I'm angry. I don't know how to be nice to people um, right now. I, and I certainly don't have time for niceties, right? Or grace for ignorance. <laughs> it didn't have to be this way. That's how I am. <laughs> but in that weariness of the two disciples, they still followed through with explaining what happened. They shared how Jesus had been condemned and crucified. They shared a pretty mansplainy explanation of how the women were witnesses to his resurrection. But the men went to check and see just to be sure. And you know what? It was just like what the women said after all. And the tomb was empty, but they still hadn't seen Jesus alive. And and I don't know if if it is that, that Jesus has enough of it by then, of this weird lack of belief of the women, or that he's just efficient and knows that it will take a a whole long walk to do the teaching he's about to do. But he cuts them off, and, and he tells them, you need to believe the prophets. And I know he's talking about the prophets of the Old Testament, but I sort of also secretly hope that he's talking about the women here, right? But then he spends the rest of the walk teaching them. And so we have this sort of relationship revealing itself. Jesus as stranger teacher and and these two disciples learning from him, and and they're intrigued. And that's impressive in itself because anger and grief aren't always heart and mind spaces where you're ready to receive teachings. But they are. And remember, they still don't know who Jesus is, right? And they invite this stranger to stay and to eat with them. And and Jesus is like, okay. And, And what happens is as they're sitting down to eat, and then, and then all of a sudden, it's like they snap back into this ritual where Jesus is the host, and Jesus took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And it was just like that, and they could see who he was. It's Jesus, <laughs> alive, in front of them. Not, not Jesus from before, but Jesus of new life, in glory, and presence right there and and they don't have a lot of time to take it in because as soon as they recognized him it's like poof he disappears interesting and then they started remembering and talking to each other remember what had happened and how how great it actually was saying oh this is why our hearts were burning while we were walking with him it felt right right it was in their remembering over a meal that they were making the meaning It's at the table that they recognize the living Christ. It's at the table that they saw the life they never could have imagined. It's at the table they remembered that Jesus had been present with them long before they realized it. How often, how often are our eyes closed to the life we find at the tables of Christ? How often do we find it impossible to imagine that Jesus will show up in ordinary kindness or the basic goodness of our days, let alone walking with us while we are angry at what never had to be or are so grieved at what is gone? Because of this Daily Bread series, I've gotten to to hear your stories and see your stories and your lives around the table a little more clearly. Some of those have been through glimpses of your family's baking at home, or when you drive through and hand groceries uh, out the door to to give to our, our neighbors in need on the first Sunday food drive. That happens from 12.30 to 1.30. But, but I want to tell you about one family story in our church that has capti- captivated me for almost a year. Jen and and Matt Bowles uh, have two little girls, and Jen shared a story about how a family friend of hers would come to her house when she was a little girl to bring donuts every single Saturday. Donuts with Uncle Boyd, they'd name it. 
And that tradition has continued on to the next generation with her kids. Donuts with Gramps, they call it. It's a story of how chosen family can bring some truly steady joy and life to the table. Check it out. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Jen. And I'm Kay. And we're the Bowles family. With Clara, who's off screen. I know how it started. Um, our gramps used to be Nana's boss, and he would come by our Nana's house and bring our mom donuts when she was little. Saturday morning, my brother and I would, you know, rush downstairs and kind of wait for the donut man to show up. And there's Gramps with the donuts. And it was just, you could count on it. And it would happen. And it was always, you know, family around the table. He became family and then it kept going and going and going. Okay, it was about two. And we didn't really talk about it. It was just one Saturday, there was Gramps at my door with some donuts. So he keeps bringing us donuts the whole reason that we moved back here to raise our kids be close to family yeah it was for those moments it's certainly something i remember is that donut joy before covid he would come in and we would all have donuts together every saturday at the table um and there was usually did you build legos with him sometimes at the table yeah yeah but also, before COVID, sometimes we would go to his farm and have donuts there. Um, but then COVID happened, and I think the last normal thing we did was Saturday donuts at our dining table with Gramps, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, before we, you know, shut down the world to keep everybody safe. What happened that next Saturday? We thought donuts wouldn't happen. And then who was at our front door, Kay? Gramps. Yeah. With his mask on and what? That box of donuts and a big pan of hot chocolate. Yep, and he's brought them hot chocolate to have with their donuts because the donuts aren't enough sugar, right? Some some Saturdays, they're, well, most Saturdays, they're at the window and they're losing their minds. They're so excited to see Gramps. Hi, Hi Gramps! Gramps. Oh. It's Gramps! Even now, but particularly when COVID started, and he kept coming um, and they didn't lose that. Yeah, it looked different. And even as much as it filled my cup, it broke my heart to see him outside the door as they're, you know, telling them through the door the, the millions of things that they would have told him at our table if it had been safe. Um, it was still, I don't know, it was... There's still some... Uh, uh a bedrock of foundation. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially in COVID times, you see how important those moments are. I know it helps the girls know that no matter how awful and hard, I mean, their lives were ripped away from them a year ago, but the donuts still came. And there was Gramps outside the door waving at them, making funny faces and making their eyes light up just like he would if he could sit at our table. Um, and I think there's power in that and that kind of um, faith that you can put in another person. It, it feeds and nourishes you in, in that time when there's so much taking and there's so much trial and so much there's there's something that can feed you and sustain you as you go through the efforts and trials of, of this time and your week. And even if it's just a stressful week or whatever you have going on in your life, it just gives you something to pull from. Yep. You stop everything and you enjoy those donuts. And so hopefully, um, I think the thing we always talk about when COVID's over is we'll have grants back in the house, won't we? And it'll be the return of, uh, of Saturday donuts around the table. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel really, really happy. Are you going to give Gramps the biggest hug ever when it's safe? Yes. Yeah. For the bowls, their table 
even when it got moved from inside their house to the porch at a distance, was the thing that they could count on to give them life every week. It's the thing they can't wait to return to. It's the life that has helped them rise above the brokenness of this year. Their Donuts with Gramps is such a glimpse for me of resurrection, of rising with Christ. Sometimes it looks like being Gramps, steady and generous and serving others for the sake of life-giving joy against all odds. Are, are you willing to wait to see the transformation of new life and something that takes years and generations to establish? Donuts with Gramps is special because it's happened over time. It's waited out time. Might we trust that, that we could see Jesus years from now because we start to serve him today? Because we start to listen to him today? The disciples recognized him at the table because they followed him in more than just that moment. Rising with Christ also looks like being those sweet girls whose job it is to anticipate and to eagerly wait every week. Just as they expect Gramps to come with their donuts, we are invited <laughs> to have that kind of anticipatory joy and expectation that Jesus will be present in our lives offering us the daily bread that we need? Is your face pressed against the, the glass window of your personal situation? Pressed against the glass window of the brokenness of our world, waiting for Jesus to offer the daily bread we need to make it through? Are you able to receive what comes? Those girls speak delight into the world, saying, Gramps, Gramps, it's Gramps! as soon as they see him pull in the drive with the donuts for the table. Can you imagine yourself ready to recognize Jesus when he is present at every table and time in your life? Do you have eyes to see Jesus? It's Jesus! Look, it is Jesus! When Jesus died, even his most faithful followers thought it was the end. There's no coming back from that kind of darkness. They were both sad and angry. The tomb was rolled away anyway. And not only that, but Jesus wanted to come back and keep teaching and keep hosting a table of grace. The joy of the Lord is that we are all welcomed at the heavenly table again in the face of death, with the promise of resurrection right here when we gather together, every time. Jesus died because the world did not want goodness and God to win, and Jesus rose again, and with that resurrection defeated any doubt that we are too far gone. Our personal failure, our communal and systemic sin, the power of greed and racism and compassion and, and not enoughness are defeated the moment that tomb, that tomb rolled away. And we should rest assured that when Jesus came back and sat at the table with the disciples again and took on the position of host, in that moment, we can see the pres what the presence of Christ looks like on this side of the resurrection. Love and welcome and grace and longing to be with us, even when the worst thing, his death, could have kept us apart. He was at the table again. If your eyes today are like the two disciples on the road and you're unable to see Jesus on your walk, maybe God is calling you, like God called them, to spend some time learning, to devote yourself back to church, to study scripture, and let your heart resurrect. The disciples said their hearts were burning. Maybe God is calling you back to church or, or to church for the first time. Say yes to seeking answers to your questions. You might just see Jesus revealed before you. If your eyes are unable to see Jesus as clearly as you hope in your life, maybe you're called to serve God by serving others to see what just might show up in front of you. The two, the two disciples did that. They welcomed this stranger into the home 
with them to share a meal, and all of a sudden it was clear that Jesus is alive. Might serving God in the community or, or practicing justice or giving generously, might that sacrificial act be the thing that helps you see life in a new way? This year has been dark and difficult and unjust and also beautiful and sacred and awakening. And something this bread series has taught me is that it takes time to let bread rise. Rising takes time. Two decades of donut joy take time. Waiting out a pandemic to return to the table again takes time. Time for God's dream of true justice, abundant love, and big, wide mercy takes time. Let yourself rise, St. Paul. See Jesus all around you and believe the life-saving work he offers. If you are not where you want to be in your life, in your marriage, in your faith journey, in your career, or in your shame spiral, or your debt, or your discipleship, hear the good news this Easter. Rising takes time. Rising takes time. The good news of Easter is that we know that Jesus is going to be present at the table where we are all seated whenever we're ready to see him and is waiting is waiting patiently, eagerly, anticipatorily to be seen by all of us. So open your eyes. Life is here. Let us rise with Christ. May it be so. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all. Amen. We have a chance to respond to the word. It's something we do every week at St. Paul's. We pray. We light candles. If you're at your house, go grab a candle or let the sun be your flame today. Let the sun and the sound of the birds echo your prayers. Pray for how God might rise in your life. Pray for what resurrection looks like revealed to you. This is also a chance where we offer uh, our offerings uh, to, to God to be used to glorify God and God's purpose in the world. At Christmas and Easter every year, we have a special offering uh, at St. Paul's that goes to a mission. And this year, it's going to be our transformed version of Servant Sunday. Servant Sunday is something in it that would happen and take the place of Sunday worship. And instead, we would serve others, serve and partner with multiple organizations in our community during that service. This year, this summer, the first week of June, we're instead going to have a week of service. And all week long, we're going to go out into the community and partner with organizations like cross lines, like the hub. We're going to be out in our community garden that feeds people <laughs> uh, here in Kansas City. We're going to have a chance to serve together. And so your offering today, you can go online to stpaulslenexa.org slash give, and there's a special line for Easter offering. And when you give to that, you're going to help us uh, uh, reveal life, but also see life all around us in, in our community ministry partners as we serve. So let us us go to God in prayer. Let us go to God in generosity. There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen.
It's Jesus that sets the table for us today. And so you know that that means everyone is invited. Wherever you are, whether this is the first time you've ever participated in communion or whether this is something that is part of your weekly routine, you are invited to find a piece of bread or a donut and a cup filled with juice or coffee or milk and come to this table and on this day that we celebrate that Christ is alive I invite you to come to this table with the same excitement and enthusiasm that the Bowles girls look for the donut man let's pray together creator of heaven and earth from the very beginning you have offered us love and life you created us with a covenant based on justice and faithfulness. But when we broke that covenant and chose death over life, you remained ever faithful. And your covenant has shown us what faithfulness looks like in all times and all places. Jesus, you taught those who would listen to you. You healed those who believed in you received everyone who sought you out. 
and you lived peace in the midst of violence, love in the face of hate, and spoke truth to powers that promoted death. You suffered and died because of your refusal to cooperate with evil. And then on the third day, you rose triumphant over evil and all that would threaten to rob your people of dignity and humanity. And so we gather today as your redeemed, renewed, refreshed people following the spirit that you sent to lead and to guide us. And we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took wonderful, yummy bread and broke it, gave thanks to God for it, and he offered it to his friends, saying, take and eat, for this is my body. Eat it and remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he said, this is the cup of my life and it's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this and remember me. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be Christ in the world. Open our eyes to the mystery of Christ's presence in the most ordinary things in these our ordinary lives. May we be the very essence of the living Christ in every moment we have until we gather at that heavenly banquet together and feast. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall never hunger. Jesus poured out the cup of salvation and he said, All who believe in me shall never be thirsty. Receive these elements now together and accept God's grace into your body and into your very lives as we pray the prayer that Christ has taught us to pray and our children will lead us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Through the eyes of men it seems there's so much we have lost As we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked One by one the enemy is whispering lies and they're the morphers You are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So, with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley of the faith. Yeah. So, we call out to dry bones, come alive. Bones. 
together, St. Paul's. Thank you so much for joining in worship this Easter Sunday. We hope to see some of you from 1230 to 130 for our first Sunday food drive. It will be wonderful to see you. If not, join us back next Sunday, the Sunday after that, and then the Sunday after that, we will be outside in person, and we would love to, to see you. Our eyes revealed. You know, <laughs> that was a Bible joke. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> As we go from this place, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit go with us now and always, that we might see the life of Christ revealed all around us, whatever table we find ourselves at. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Happy Easter. It was my turn.